Hello everybody, my name is Alex and welcome to a video where we're going to talk about the Owls of Minerva. Now we're doing this because although I've talked about the secret societies in past videos, I wanted to give each secret society a focus. A video where I can focus on simply that secret society, its bonuses, what I think of them, and obviously um, tips and tricks that you guys have suggested to me about them, or maybe that I've come across myself from playing as them. So we are going to do that today and I am very excited. So the Owls of Minerva. Now these are actually my favourite um, secret society because their bonuses are cool as we'll go through in a second. But just remember this, they work in, in government, they operate in government, they impact government and they impact espionage. And for me, that's what secret societies are all about. They are people out of the public eye, people we don't even know exist that are running government. So I, I love the idea of it and I love how this one works. Anyway, what about their initiation bonus? So this is the first bonus, and it's unlocked by sending an envoy to a city-state. Now at this point, it's important to know that there's an 80% chance of success. So just because you send an envoy to a city-state, it won't definitely reveal the Owls of Minerva to you. Just keep sending them, and eventually they should reveal themselves. Also, if you send an envoy to a city-state and it doesn't show immediately, just check your governor's page because it might have just not gave you a notification. I believe there was like a glitch there or something, so just, you know, check it. But anyway, so their initiation bonus gives plus one economic policy slot and each trade route you send to a city-state grants one envoy there. Now, we can split this up into two. So apart from wildcard policy slots, economic slots are the most powerful in the early game. And having this extra economic slot is going to allow you to do things like push builders out quicker, whilst also getting other bonuses and stuff like that. So having another economic policy slot is pretty good, and it just allows you to move forward in the early game. The second half to this, the trade route bonus, isn't too bad either. Bottom line, it's going to make it easy to be suzerain of those city-states you really want, either for their strategic importance or because of the bonuses they give, so... As to start, the Owls of Minerva have a pretty good initiation bonus, in my opinion. So moving on, when you reach the medieval era, you will unlock the Ritual bonus. Now, just to kind of highlight this, you need to use a Governor title to upgrade your Secret Society in the Governor's panel. So you will reach the medieval era, get access to this stuff, but then you need to use a Government title to actually work it. Anyway, so the Ritual bonus allows players to build the replacement for the bank, the Gilded Vault. Now this building, which is based on the rumoured gathering places of secret societies, where it's been said that like governments have been toppled and all that crazy stuff, this Gilded Vault grants culture equal to the adjacency bonus of the district and, more importantly, gives plus one trade route in a city for having a harbour. So point number one, we all know how important culture is, especially for getting down the civics tree. So if you're placing your commercial hubs well with good adjacency bonuses, you're going to get a nice helping hand. For example, if you place a commercial hub that gets plus three um, uh, money as an adjacency bonus, you will then get that plus three culture um, as well if you kind of get this bonus. Now that's really good, but one thing that people need to remember, and I'm sure you're well aware of this, Plan your cities early on. I'm sure lots of you do it anyway, but if you don't do so much planning, make sure you do it because the culture bonus is worth it. I was playing um, the game you can see on screen now. I'm planning my cities out to make sure the commercial hubs had good adjacency bonuses was very much worth it when it came to culture. The second thing I'd like to mention on this is that there is a policy card slot which doubles um, commercial hub adjacency bonus in your empire. I think it gives plus 100% commercial adjacency bonus. That will also double your culture bonus um, just from this. So make sure you're working things like that. Basically, you want your commercial hubs to have as much adjacency bonus as possible. Point number two, and this is where the bonus kind of really comes alive in my opinion and that is with the additional trade route for having a harbour. Now the possibility of two trade routes per city is very powerful. Whether you use them internally for bonus food or production or externally for gold, science, culture or faith, whatever, or maybe even to gain those bonus envoys in city-states. Basically, you're going to want as many traders as you can with this secret society. I was sending a ton of traders to um, the city-states I was near. Basically, nobody could touch me because I was suzerain, and that meant that I was getting all those nice bonuses. So, you're going to have lots of trade routes, and it's going to allow you to 
pretty much produce lots of gold and have lots of city-state friends. As an overall summary for this bonus, like I said, city plan, definitely, definitely city plan, and also get a few good cities, get a few commercial hubs and gilded vaults in there, and it will be worth your while. You will generate a lot of money and it will also help you along the civics tree. So moving on, the indoctrination bonus is unlocked by reaching the industrial era. Again, you've got to use a governor title to unlock it, but it's there once you get to the industrial era. Now this bonus gives plus one wildcard policy slot, plus two spy capacity, and your cities gain plus four loyalty per turn and plus one amenity when your spy is in their territory. Secret societies and intrigue, it's, it's very, very interesting and it's also quite useful. So again, I'm going to split this up into a few parts. So the first one is the plus two spy capacity. That is really good. You know, just get as many spies out there as you can. Get them siphoning funds, stuff like that. Spies are very useful. And if you know how to use... Oh, my chair. Spies are very useful. And if you know how to use spies, you'll know that an extra two spy capacity is very, very good. The second part to this is the plus one wildcard policy slot. Now... Obviously, wildcard policy slots are very powerful regardless because you can put literally any policy in there. One suggestion I have is maybe put the Machiavellianism bonus card in there. That gives plus five production towards spies and spies operations take 25% less time. Now, this is an obvious choice because, you know, you've got those bonus spies. This is going to allow you to um, use them faster and, and build them faster. So maybe use that policy card in that slot. But obviously, if you have different needs, if you need amenities, stuff like that, whatever, just use, use the card how you see fit. So a bonus wildcard policy slot is always a nice addition. And the third part of this bonus is that your cities gain plus four loyalty per turn and one amenity when your spy is in their territory. Now, I really like this because it allows you to deploy your extra spies to help manage cities. It allows you to use spies in multiple ways and for multiple tasks. So I think that's really cool. Um, yeah, it just, it's just nice. If you need a spy somewhere for loyalty and amenities, it's good. And I also like the idea that the spy is going in there and, and it, it's creating a sort of a web in that city of people who are loyal to you, hence the extra loyalty and hence the extra immunity. So I like how it works in the game and I also like it in principle. The final bonus, the master plan bonus, is unlocked by reaching the atomic era. Now this means that whenever an offensive spy mission is successful, you also gain half of the gold, faith, culture and science that the target city earned that turn. And the second bit of this is you earn 3% of your gold treasury of gold per turn, which is up to a thousand gold. Now, the first thing to mention is that some people have said to me, well, a lot of the time I don't even get to the atomic era and therefore it's not that useful. But I personally think it is. I've been playing games, maybe just stretching them out a bit longer, stuff like that. So I think for an average player, this is a nice bonus and I will break it down now. So the first bit, the bonus of gold, faith, culture and science whenever an offensive spy mission is complete, I think is very cool. If you can deploy all of your spies on offensive missions, like I said, use the Machiavellianism policy card to get things done a bit quicker, you could have bonus shields in every single area. Now, I know it's late game and a lot of these bonuses aren't going to be so useful to you late game, but it's still good. It's still nice. Target the big cities with the specialty districts. You know, if you're lagging behind a bit or you need a bonus in one of these areas, it's going to be pretty cool. So I, I like it and I think it's very useful. So the second part of this is the earning 3% of your gold treasury per turn and that works up to 1,000 gold. This bonus will not pay you more than 1,000 gold. But regardless, this is a big financial bonus. Now, one thing I did, and this came from... Um, everything, all the bonuses prior, is I obviously built a lot of commercial hubs and a lot of harbours for the trade routes. Now, what that meant with good city planning is that when I got to the Atomic Era, my bank balance, the money I had to spend, was absolutely massive. And because this is a percentage bonus, when I entered the Atomic Era with thousands and thousands and thousands of gold, I started making a ton off this bonus. I think my income per turn more than doubled when I activated this bonus because it works as a percentage. Now, let me let me give you some numbers as why um, it works um, well to have more gold when you enter the Atomic Era. So if you enter the Atomic Era with 500 gold, this 3% bonus equates to only an additional 50 gold per turn. 
Now, if your treasury has 3,000 gold already in it when you enter the Atomic Era, you will start making an additional 90 gold per turn. So, you are making a lot of money. And 90 gold per turn is like a very good amount of money. If you enter the Atomic Era with lots of money because you've planned your commercial hubs well, using your trade routes well, you've got harbours and all that good stuff, this bonus is going to allow you to be very, very rich. And if you need an extra push on domination or something like that, you're suddenly going to be able to buy and maintain a very big army. Don't spend all the money though, because remember, it's a percent thing. So if you start with like 5,000 gold, but then end up on 500, you're going to stop making this money quickly. Now, I know so far I've already given a few tips, such as the Machiavellianism policy card. I also talked about making sure your commercial hub adjacency bonus is, is maximized. So maybe putting that card in that gives a 100% extra bonus. Um, but I have some more tips. So tip number one, as with all the new secret societies, their bonuses work well with particular saves. And this is what we're going to focus on here. The new Rough Rider Teddy, for example, has the ability that envoys sent to city-states you have a trade route with count as two envoys. So, when you combine this with the fact that the Alps of Minerva give the bonus that each trade route sent to a city-state grants one envoy anyway, suddenly the Rough Rider Teddy save gets two envoys for every trade route to a city-state. So basically, if you send a trade route to a city-state, you will get two envoys there when playing as Rough Rider Teddy. So if you want to control city-states, this is a good way to go about it. Another save that's perhaps worth a mention is the standard Catherine de' Medici, not the new one we got in the Persona pack, the basic one. Her bonus free spy and extra spy capacity with the castle's technology, plus the fact that all spies start as agents with the free promotion, can only be a good thing when you get to bonuses that require spies and that focus on spies, so I think that's worth mentioning. And finally for the civs, um, Pericles' Greece is worth a mention too. He gets plus 5% culture per city-state he is suzerain of, and if you think about it, all of these trade routes given envoys is going to allow you to be um, suzerain of a lot of city-states if you want. And he also gets an additional wildcard policy slot in any government. Both of these work well with the Owls of Minerva. If you're playing as Pericles and the Owls of Minerva, you're going to have very strong culture and also a very strong government. Other civs certainly have bonuses that would benefit from the Owls of Minerva too. So if you've got any of those in your mind, let me know down in the comments. And I think the overall thing I'd say from my playthrough as the Owls of Minerva is plan your cities. Uh, it sounds really simple, but if you plan your commercial hub, plan your harbours, you're going to have lots of money, and money can only be a good thing in Civ 6. Okay, so before we wrap this up, I just want to say a massive thank you to the people that you can see on the screen right here. They gave me some tips and stuff like that, so thank you. And if you want to give me any tips for the Hermetic Order, then make sure you let me know down in the comment section below. I will obviously feature them on screen like I am doing here, so yeah. Thank you so much to everybody who took part in creating this and thank you for watching. Thank you so much for watching this video today. If you want to learn more about the Ethiopian Civ in Civ 6, then check out the video in the box below. Also, make sure you hit the like button on this video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the next deep dive on the Hermetic Order. Thank you for watching. My name is Alex and I will see you in another video soon.